Mikel Jolie is the singer for the band The Airborne Toxic Event, and he had a childhood unlike any other. He and his brother grew up in a cult called Synanon. We were essentially born in an orphanage inside a cult and lived there till I was nearly four, he was nearly seven, uh, and then we had to escape. We lived on the run for a while. A lot of different things happened to us along the way. Jolet's story of growing up in and escaping from Synanon is recounted in his new autobiography, Hollywood Park. Synanon was a place that started for a bunch of dope fiends in the 60s to get clean off of heroin. That's really what it started as. A bunch of guys that had been in AA and they set up a place for everyone to live because they wanted to help other addicts. And they didn't think AA went far enough for heroin addicts. So they wanted to have a more sort of intense version of that. And that's what they did. And then it worked for a long time, good 10, 15 years. It, it, it helped a lot of people uh, get clean off heroin. Uh, my dad was one of those people. My dad had done some time in prison and when he got out, he had a heroin addiction that he'd established in jail. and. He OD'd and then someone dropped him off uh, at Synanon. And then he got clean and he turned it around. He never, and he never went back on drugs, never went back to, he never got a parking ticket. You no, know, my dad wishes he was in the band, man. He's like, he, he sometimes he'll be like, yo, I, can I come sing on stage? I'm like, dad, come on. He's got a good voice though. Like he can actually sing He's got really a long well. sustain. He does and he's got this <laughs> deep baritone. So Synanon was good at a few things. And then what happened was it, uh, lifestylers started moving in, the, the non-addicts, what they called the squares. Those were people, a lot of them were intellectuals and activists, and that's what my mom was. My mom was a free speech activist from Berkeley. She moved in to change the world because it started to have this idea that if we apply these same principles, we can change the world. And then at that point, it became the insular society. Uh, and then as happens with insular societies, the power starts to be in the hands of too few. There's this leader named Chuck and Chuck started doing all this crazy stuff like breaking up marriages and forcing vasectomies, forcing abortions, you know, punishing people with violence, you know, hoarding guns and weapons and training these sort of military type goons. And it just went crazy. And then, you know, at some point, a bunch of people figured that out and left and escaped because the whole thing kind of spiraled uh, into madness. And that is where Joe Lay spent his childhood. We didn't know what a mom or a dad or a grandma was. We didn't have Christmas or Passover or birthdays. We were very much in this difficult situation. There was a lot of abuse and it, it was an orphanage. We were orphans. And then one day this woman shows up with a shaved head because everyone had shaved heads. And she's like, you know, I'm your mom. And we were like, what's a mom? We didn't, you know, we didn't know what a mom was, but uh, we had to escape. So we left with her and uh, we were always told the bad men are going to come. The bad men are going to come. Uh, so we never were allowed to go outside. And this is when we were living in East Oakland uh, in Berkeley and we're living on like, you know, food stamps and government cheese. But things got better for Jolie. He grew up to graduate from Stanford University with honors. He worked as a journalist and in 2006, the Airborne Toxic event formed and his career took off. Yeah, straight ahead, please. I'm pretty happy with my career. <laughs> my 12 year old self is like, this is awesome. It's like the professional athlete, rock and roll singer, or kind of like, those are like your, maybe professional skateboarder, I don't know. My theory is that the best art will come from unpacking my struggle. Springsteen has this idea that you don't give people your solutions, you give them your struggle. And different people have different struggles. This this happened to be my struggle. And so it was sort of more like if I was going to do that, it required this level of examination and sort of forthrightness and honesty and revelation about my past because that is what we went through. So it's not so much that I set out to write a book about, you know, cults and families and addiction and the search for true love, which is what my book is about. Mm -hmm. It's that I really wanted to write a book that, that dealt with my sort of biggest joys and deepest struggles and those, those things just happen to be the to be that for inside edition digital this is sal bono <laughs>